Okay, everyone, so for our first day of our blogging class, we have a variety of conceptual things to talk about and then some hands-on things. At the end of the day, we will also have an activity where uh, we will have a brainstorming session to figure out uh, topics that everyone could write about. Um, before that, we're going to back up and, as I said, not only do I teach in these colleges these topics, but I'm also part of a company that we do this for real clients that pay real money and get real mad if you don't do it real right. So I'm going to show some examples of some clients right now. If you would like to, you can open up your web browser. We have all the popular ones down there. Open up your web browser, and this is one of the clients that we have. You can, you can check out you can check out this address here, which is aquí es texcoco.com. A Q U I E S T E X C O C O dot com. Aquí es texcoco. This is one of our clients. Um, let's go check out their website briefly, if you if you would like. I don't have it yet right now. I'm going to zoom in in just a moment. And so this is one of our clients, and this is a Mexican food restaurant, and you might say, well, the purpose of this client is to sell food. They have a website, and you'll see on the top right corner that um, there's a button there to order now or to book a table. So the purpose here would be to, to, buy, to buy food. And you'd say, well, why would they have then a blog? The reason that this particular site has a blog, even though you might not think for it to have one, is because the food here, notice the tagline is traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. This is not California burritos and nachos and any of that sort of thing. This is traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. Barbacoa de borrego, in other words. Mexican lamb barbecue. It's not carne asada and that sort of thing. And so this food is unique it's authentic, it's traditional, and the purpose of the blog then, if you take a look, if you click blog, you'll see that there are various articles, various posts on the different unique food that is sold here. For example, one about moronga. Keep going, there's one about catering, there's one about chapulines, there's different events. So I'm bringing up this client to show you examples Again, concrete examples of concepts why you might be interested in blogging for your business. Over and over, I'm going to talk about the concept of your business or your product and such, but you don't have to have a business. You don't have to have a product and such. It's just that I need to use that shorthand, business, product, brand, etc. But whatever you're doing online, if you have a business, if you are an artist and want to show off your work, if you're a band and want to get more gigs, if you're a nonprofit organization and want to get more traffic or donations, whatever you're trying to do online, all of the things that I teach apply in the SEO class, in the blogging class, in the social media class, all of those concepts apply to whatever you're trying to do online. So this client, the owner of the restaurant, sells, for example, pulque. How many of you have heard of what pulque is? Raise your hand. One person. Well, we've got, that's fine, we've got an article about that. What if someone went online and, and you know, you went to Google or whatever and they searched, what is pulque? Someone wants to find out what it is, there's going to get various answers, and then the, um, the point then of creating this content, look at this, on page one of a Google search is our client. That's what everyone is trying to do. Get on page one of Google. Get on page one of Yahoo. 
get on page one of the search engines. Obviously, number one of page one is like the, the best spot of all, but page one still is coveted real estate. And so our client is on page one here. Someone searches for this. People all over the world searching that question, our client's link appears on page one of Google. That, in short, is one of the most concrete ways that I can tell you this is why blogging matters. Creating content to help you get found. Now, I'm going to be writing notes in a little notepad here, and I'm going to give you these notes at the end of the day in the network folder. You can take notes, of course, but I'll be writing notes here as well, and I'll give those to you at the end of the day. So I'm going to say here, one big reason to blog to help you get found by the search engines. And that's a generic term for Google, for Yahoo, for Bing, for AOL search, whatever. It's the generic term for, um, for the search engines. So that's one reason to blog, to create content. So I'm going to say how by creating content that search engines can index and people can search for. Search engines, the SEs, search engines. Search engines can index, meaning store. They're going to store either a, a snippet or a whole copy of what you wrote. And so when someone searches, what is pulque? And if the search engine had found on your website, you have made that question and had that answer, the search engine can then show your page to whoever's looking for that. <coughs> so I'll give you a handout with, uh, with some tips and concrete things, of course. We have a whole concept to talk about, but in, in short, you know, what kind of blogs to write and how to write exactly, we'll talk about that. But here, just looking throughout the different articles on this particular site is a very good overview of what to write because, again, I practice what I preach, what I talk about in these classes. We do this in our company for clients. I would be showing you things that we would do for a real client and things that work. There's an article here about craft beer and Mexican food. So this restaurant serves local craft beer. Craft beer has become um, has become a, a big business. San Diego is actually one of the big hubs of craft beer in the whole U.S. And so this restaurant, yes, they serve all of these classic domestic beers, and they serve these Mexican beers, traditional beers, but they also serve all of these craft beers. So if someone is searching for some of the names of these beers or concepts of craft beers in San Diego, there's an article about that. <clears throat> there's an article that has this text and the graphics all about the craft beer, these keywords, again, all of these things that we'll be talking about. And in this particular example, this particular article, this blog post has gotten 189 shares on, on Facebook. It's been seen by more and more people. It's been shared on Facebook, creating more traffic. This restaurant, not only do they have a restaurant where you can go and eat at the table, they do catering. So this restaurant wants to also be known for catering. When you, want, when you have a party and you want something different and you, you want to cater it, uh, and you search Mexican food catering, well, that's an article there that could help the client get found, help you get found. Again, we will do an activity later on where we can brainstorm for everyone to figure out ideas about what you specifically could write about. Here, I'm just showing an example of a real client.
the big reason is to help you get found by the search engines. So another concept here will say that blogging creates content on a regular basis that helps you get found. We'll talk about what content to create, what's a regular basis, how much should I write, how should I write. We'll talk about that all, of course. But here's the big secret. Once you know that, the details then fall into place. But this is the whole purpose for most people for blogging. Let's say another reason for blogging to make money from blogging. Now traditionally, if you wrote an article for a newspaper, or an article for a magazine, or any traditional publication, well, clearly you make money off of that because they pay you for what you wrote. Depending on what uh, arrangement you have, it could be lucrative. Uh, obviously now, in the 21st century, uh, print media and such has really diminished compared to the hundreds of years of what it was. Uh, so the new generation of it is blogging where previously you needed, there was a gatekeeper, there was someone that was allowing you into their magazine, there was someone that was allowing you to be in their newspaper, there was someone allowing you, opening the gate for you to get exposure. Now, in the 21st century, anyone can become a publisher, anyone can become a blogger. You have the ability to start writing today on any topic you want and make money from it. Honestly, it is not as easy and lucrative as it used to be in the old days, about traditional publishing, you created a contract with a publisher, you got, you wrote, you got paid, that's it. Nowadays, because you are your own publisher, and you are your own writer, you have much more to take into account, but you are, you will be able to make money from blogging, and very briefly to say, usually via advertising. The, the subscription models and such don't seem to work as well. Uh, charging people to read your stuff doesn't quite work as we had hoped it would. People have so gotten used to so much free stuff online that even 99 cents to read your article? Even that sounds like, why would I pay 99 cents? I'm going to use that to buy you know, a couple of sips of my latte. Um, so usually then people are going to make money by advertising. That can, of course, be a positive or negative thing. Uh, we're still trying to figure all of this out. Bloggers are trying, trying to figure out what's the best way to monetize this thing. Because some are successful by charging to read their articles, to subscribing. But that's such a small percentage. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to say it's easily. 5% of bloggers that are successful are successful because they, they charge for their articles. That means 90 to 95 percent are successful other ways, and that other way is often advertising. So we'll talk about that as well. And again, everything that I'm talking about, those two reasons I have firsthand experience in. Everyone is going to be in a different, on a different track, or have a different point of view, or a different goal. But these are two big concepts of why blogging is valuable. So I'm going to focus most of our time on this first one here, because even this one leads to this one. As we create content that helps us get found, let's say I have a website where I want to talk all about politics. So I'm going to start a po political website, and then I'm going to write these articles. Well, I need people to come to read the articles. At the very least, I want people to read what I'm saying. I'm writing it for a purpose. I want people to read this stuff. So I still want to get traffic to my site. Well, while they're on my site, perhaps, I might then make some money from advertising. So both of them are related. Even with the examples of these, of these clients, for example, the main idea for blogging for them is to get traffic to the site to sell food, but then there's some secondary income from the traffic from the advertising.
over on my SEO class. I, I sprinkled things from different classes into different classes, but for the full answer, you, you should take the other classes. So one thing regarding SEO, in the SEO class, uh, one of the activities that we do is to develop a company profile and marketing strategy for success, we'll say. We do that much more deeper in the other class. I, I just mentioned it here and there in this class, but in the other class, the SEO class, uh, we go into there in detail. The point of this is, the point is to have goals. Because it's so easy to start blogging nowadays, people make the mistake of starting a blog and starting to write without having a goal. Why are you writing? What are you writing? How are you writing? How often are you writing? All of those kinds of questions that we'll talk about in this class. But you have to have a point. You have, a go you have to have a goal. Have a goal for your online presence. Online presence is the generic term for your website, or your blog, or your eBay store or your Etsy shop, whatever your online presence is. Let's say I want to sell handmade uh, trinkets on Etsy. Well, obviously I need traffic. I need for people to know that my shop exists. I need to engage in SEO. I've been saying part of SEO is blogging. So what if I'm writing articles about the things that I sell? So when someone searches some of these keywords, they might find me, go to my Etsy, and buy my things. So the goal of my Etsy shop is to sell trinkets. All of this other stuff leads to that. The goal of Texcoco is to sell tacos, to sell food. The website has that main goal. Notice at the top we always have order online or book a table. The goal of this website is to make you hungry if you're a non-vegetarian, I suppose, and to then book a table or order online. The goal is to buy food. Now, there are very vegetarian options, actually. But the main purpose of the site is to entice you, to show you, hey, they've been on Travel Channel. Hey, they've gotten celebrity chefs in the shop. Maybe there's something I need to try out. I've never had barbecue lamb. I want to try that. So the purpose of the site is to sell you food, in short, if we distill it down to the purest essence. The purpose of the site is to sell you food. And so everything that the site is about is to get you to that point, showing the celebrity chefs that have been there, showing the hopefully tasty, enticing food, showing that they do catering events, and writing all of these blogs, these articles, being part of events, writing blogs so that people search this stuff, it helps the site get found, and then hopefully it helps you then click Buy Now. Have a goal for your online presence. All of SEO is about reaching that goal. So blogging, doing social media, uh, doing keyword research and all of these things that we talk about in all of these classes, all of that is, all of that, all of that stuff is in service of reaching your goal. That's why I'm saying have a plan. Develop a company profile marketing strategy to have a plan. You wouldn't build a house without plans. Uh, you wouldn't probably go on a family vacation to another country without a plan. You wouldn't do most things without some kind of plan. Why do you not have a plan for an online success? Let's look at another example of another client. If you go to elsavalencia.com,
This is another client. The main purpose of this client is to sell jewelry, to sell handmade gold jewelry. This uh, is another, I forgot to say, but on Texcoco, that is a WordPress website. And Elsa's site is also a WordPress site. Most of the sites that we work with nowadays are WordPress. I mention a lot of WordPress in this class. I mention WordPress in all my classes. And most of the time in our company, if we're hired, we, we use WordPress to build a website. There are many ways to build a website. Classic HTML, Dreamweaver, Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, WordPress, etc. There's many ways to build a website. Any way will work. If you get a good site out of it and you get a site that does what you need it to do, it was the right solution. I'm mentioning all the time WordPress because it's got the largest market share. It has about 25% global market share. And um, it's very popular and powerful. So different design, different style, but it's another WordPress site and it has a blog. It has a shop. And you can see the you can see the jewelry and add to cart and buy and all of that, sure. But then there's a blog. And the purpose of the blog is to um, write about the jewelry that is sold here. The purpose is to give you a backstory, a history, to give you some info about the pieces, to show you this is a great piece because of that, this is the story behind this, and then hopefully entice you then to buy the product. But again, these blogs, these articles, are all about getting found. Now maybe because we're all looking at it at once, it's a little slow. Yeah, if it didn't work, that's okay. I think we're, we're all getting onto it at once. But imagine, there's a blog here, and there are articles all about the jewelry. And these articles then are uh, enticing you, convincing you about the jewelry. The purpose of the site is to sell you jewelry. You go look at it, and you maybe get a little sticker shock, but then you read the blogs, and you read how they're handmade. All of these pieces are handmade, unique one-offs. That's a big selling point. I'm going to have something that no one else has. You're going to read the inspiration behind it, and you're going to maybe resonate with what is written, and again, maybe entice you to buy. So this one is not quite coming up. Let me show you another example then. Yeah. Here's another one. You can go over to vmcink.net. This is another website on another topic on another goal with a blog. You go to vmsync.net. social media, web design, and more. If you go around the site, you'll see that this is a company about web design, about social media, all of that stuff. You will see you can contact, etc. And then there's a blog. On the blog, there are various articles about web design tips. There are articles about financial information, building apps. So there's a lot of varied articles on these topics, web design, on apps, on all of these things. For example, okay, I want to see something like this, CSS3 rounded corners, quick tip, continue reading, and there's an article here. It's got a video, it's got text, again, we will, I will give you a handout with all of these uh, concrete tips. We're speaking a little bit more conceptually for the moment. 
But this is another website that has a blog, another website built in WordPress, and going again back to our concepts here about, well, what's your goal? The goal of that site over there is to sell their web design services, to sell their app development services, to sell some sort of tech service by creating this content that will help them get found that would hopefully lead them to contact, to reach out to them, to try to hire them to do web design, to do app design, to do something of the services that they offer here. And again, a different, a different kind of design, but it's still WordPress. Let me write some notes about WordPress here. WordPress is the most popular way to make a website. It has about 25% global market share. So about 25% of the websites of the world use WordPress, and there are billions of websites out there. So lots and lots and lots of websites use WordPress. WordPress uh, can be used for a traditional blog site. So a focus on articles. Or can be used for an e-commerce site. So focus on selling products or can be used for a business or how should we say a company site so like a portfolio so um, for example uh, portfolio Or uh, sort of, have you heard of the term business card website? That simply means a website that is like a business card for your business. That is, it shows who we are. Here's our contact info. Here's what we do. It's a, it's a, like a resume also, resume kind of website. So WordPress, in short, then it can be used for anything. Sometimes people think or have heard, well, I thought WordPress was only for blogs, writing articles. That's how it started off, but it's evolved, and it's gained so much capabilities, so many capabilities, and it's gained so much market share and fame and features that it can be for anything. I've shown, I, I showed Texcoco, which is Mexican food, e-commerce. We looked at Elsa's, which is also e-commerce, selling jewelry. I showed VMC Inc. Nothing is being sold directly on the site, but it's more of a company site to say, hey, hire us because look at our skills. And I'll show an example in a moment of the traditional blog site where the main purpose is just articles. The WordPress is most popular to make a website. It's not the only way. You can write blogs with Wix. You can write blogs with Squarespace. You can write blogs with Drupal, Joomla, all of these ways to make a website. So there's no wrong way. In this class I will focus on WordPress and if you don't have a WordPress site we will talk a little bit about creating one very quickly. Obviously we don't have the time to get to become a pro in WordPress. That's from my other class, part one and part two. But today at least we will create if you don't have one, a basic WordPress site, so we have something to work with once we actually write articles. If you have an existent website, you can use your existent website to write these articles. That'd be fine also. Question? Can I ask you what is the difference between WordPress and, I'm going to say this wrong, Drupal or Drupal? What's the difference between those? Um, in one way, there's no difference because both of them are to make a website. The big difference is, however, is how it does it. The interface, the features, the capabilities. So there's just two ways to make a website. Whichever one that you choose will work, such as Drupal, Joomla, WordPress, Wix, whatever. But people aren't shifting over to... Okay. No. 
That's another one that came out. Uh, I think Drupal came out after WordPress, but I haven't used it very, very much. But again, I keep up to date with the stuff. And from what I see, more of the people that are very advanced use Drupal because it can create very powerful sites, but it requires that you get very advanced. So some of my other colleagues, they love Drupal, but they are more focused on the nuts and bolts and the complicated stuff. For most regular people like us, perhaps, we want to stick with something like WordPress or Wix or Squarespace and such. Yes? I haven't used Wix very much as well, so I, I really don't. Uh, but really, what I would do for to get the best answers for any of this is I would go, for example, uh, do a search and search for something like um, Wix template testimonials. Testimonials. You know, go online and go to your favorite search engine and search search those things, search for these ideas and see what other people are saying because I have experience and it's, it's, you know, it's 15 years now in all of this web design stuff, but there's always something new and I don't, I don't know everything even though it looks like I do, but whatever I don't, I can look it up. You can look it up. So that's, that's what I would do. I would just look it up. Can you speak to the um, redesign? That's their option, so much InDesign. To my knowledge, InDesign has been traditionally for graphic design, which has been print. To my knowledge, you use InDesign to create flyers and posters and all of that stuff. Although it does have an aspect nowadays of some web design, I don't have much experience in that. I've traditionally used InDesign for print material. This also is a good way to, to mention, well, okay, if I'm going to search for Wix template testimonials, this is content that people have written. Maybe someone has written an article that says the top 10 best reasons to use Wix. Someone wrote that article. Someone searched that article. They found that person. Again, blogging. They wrote articles, exactly what we're talking about in this class, writing blogs and articles for people that, might, that they might search for concepts to get found. We're not limited to only text. In our articles, we can have video. This is a video that plays there. Um, we'll see how to do this, of course. Um, we'll see all of this stuff. We'll talk about the importance of social media. Again, all of these things overlap with each other. Question? This, um video content within a blog uh, have any bearing on the search engine rankings? It does, definitely, because it's content. Any content you're creating helps with the search engines. So if you create video content, um, that helps you too. And studies are showing that video content is becoming much more dominant in what people want to see. That obviously takes a lot more effort than writing. This video had to be created and edited and so forth. And over on my social media class, there's part one, part two. In part two, next month, I spend two days on talking about YouTube, creating videos, uploading to YouTube, getting found on YouTube, and all of that. So that'll be next month, Wednesday nights, 6 p.m. So we can also add, here's something. Uh, here's something related to the, the latest tactics. Again, I'll have a handout about all of this stuff. But here's one about investment tips for millennials. And there's an article and it goes on and, you know, it goes on and sometimes these things are a little complicated so it has to be a long article. And maybe I don't have time to, uh, to read the whole thing. Well, here's another up-and-coming tactic. There's also the audiobook version. There's also the audiobook version of this article, right, embedded into the 
embed it into the, uh, the article is the audio version. Investment Tips for Millennials May 28th, 2016 It's never too early to start thinking about retirement. Yes, even if you're a millennial. These investment tips... It's basically word for word what the article is, but some people don't have time to read the article. Well, this is downloadable right to my phone and I can hear it on the drive to work. This, of course, takes more effort. We will touch on these things. There's a lot to talk about, of course, like I said. But this is another way to do it because the thing that any good marketer or advertiser knows is you want to reach an audience wherever they're at. Let me write this down right here. Good marketers, also known as advertisers, Yes, you can get online classes, audio classes, instead of being in a classroom. Good marketers know, reach your audience wherever they are. For those that have the time to sit down and read that article, there's a version of it. For those that don't and need to hear it on the road, there's a version of it. Yes, that's double the work. For that client, you know, we wrote that article, and then I clearly recorded it, and I just read it, and put a little music into it and such, and it's an eight-minute long audio version, a little ebook version out of it, and reaching people in different ways. Yes? I mean, just ballpark figure, I mean, would that double what, the, what your client would something like that double what you think, like what the client would pay? It really depends on whatever agreement and contract you have with the client. With that particular client, I believe that one is a flat rate per month. Uh, it's like a retainer. Based on various concepts and plans that we have for the month, then that money was used. You know, there were various simple kinds of articles written on previous weeks and months. Then for the budget, because it was within the budget, we then spent the time to create the audio version of it. The reason to try different things is because that's how you figure out what works. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I, right away I'm only going to do audiobooks, and it's not working. Well, I spent all that time to just do that. So if we do both kinds and other variations, like videos too, we can check our statistics. Remember, one of the goals of the class is to check how is this stuff working. We're going to check our statistics to see the ones with the audiobook actually didn't get as many hits as the one with the plain text. So, long answer to a short question, but it's going to depend on the client. And that's why you talk it out with them, you create a contract and all of that. You, know, you, just don't, you just don't have a verbal contract. You need to have a written down contract that tries to spell out as much as possible. And even us, even me that I've been doing it this long, I still, once in a while, struggle to figure out what's the best price to, to give just because there's so many factors. I would love to be charging our usual cost for this particular client, but then this particular client doesn't have the budget. So do we want to take the client on or do we want to lower our price? It's just a big answer to that question. Yes. I know you can track the number of hits, but can, within your site, can you, is there any way of tracking who clicks on the audio, who clicks on Twitter, etc.? What, what they, within the site, what they click on? Yeah, we can use something like Google Analytics to really give us a lot of detail to see exactly what everyone did. They started on the home page, they went to the about page, they looked at this, they clicked on that. You can get lots of detail. Oh, but you pay for that service. No, Google Analytics, there's a version that is free. Ah. Google Analytics. So good marketers know, reach your audience wherever they are. Good marketers know to track stats like Google Analytics. Track stats. In the real world, real world marketers do this too. Now, all of this online stuff is just a variation of what traditional marketing has been for decades, if not a few hundred years. Did anyone watch the show Mad Men when it was out? Mad Men was all about the heyday of the 1960s Madison Avenue advertisers. How did they create the ad campaigns that still drive modern marketing? Um, 
So marketing, advertising, it's been around for decades. It's that ad on the billboard. It's that ad on the radio. It's that ad in the middle of your show, before the movie. It's advertising. It's marketing. It's trying to get you aware of something. It's trying to get you to buy something. And I like to reduce it down this far. Any form of marketing is designed to make you feel bad. Because you smell bad, here's our deodorant. You don't look so good, here's our shoe. You have this problem, here's our solution. Now, not every single product is like that, of course. But that's one way to reduce down marketing. As for ours, if you want to think about it that way, again, here's an article. Hey, millennial, you're going to be broke one day. Why haven't you thought about retirement? And then, you know, the article isn't exactly putting you down, but it's telling you, why aren't you thinking about this? Try this, this, think about this for your future, etc. Because on these kinds of articles for that target audience, um, a lot of people don't think about eventually they will retire. I uh, teach a class over at Southwestern College where it's mostly 18 and 19 year olds coming right into their first college classes. And I take a moment to, to tell them, you know, completely off topic of the, of the class, I, I like to give this knowledge out because I wish I had this knowledge when I was their age. I tell them, hey, have you thought about a savings account? Have you thought about a, um, an IRA account? You know, you might not think about that in your 20s when you're 18, 19, 20, 30, and then eventually they're going to retire. And the longer you have your money saved or invested, the better it will be off when you're ready to retire. For them, you know, 40 years later, 50 years later, and so it's again about the target audience. We're, we'll, we'll have that discussion later on in the day where we have to think about, well, what should I write for my business? We'll have that later on. Here's one more... Here's one more blog. This one is completely in the style of simply a blog, simply articles. There's no other ul uh, ulterior motive, and not to use that in a negative way, but there's no other motive for this one I'm going to show you here. The motive of these other ones is to sell you something, either goods or services. Here's another one. This is my personal blog about my personal hobbies. One of my hobbies is reading and collecting comic books. I've been doing it for about 30 years now. And so I've collected a lot of comics, I've read a lot of comics, and I have here a blog about this stuff. Comic books, Comic Con, cool stuff. So I write here articles for fun, for me, um, on this topic that I like, that other people like. And you can see some other examples there. You'll see the, the various years of, of articles that were written. So there's an article, what does the UPC symbol on comics mean? Cool comic book covers, the Mighty Thor number one. So you say you want to look at that, you click. Most of these are a mixture of a little bit of text, but oftentimes a video. I like to also do the video stuff. So here's a short one and a half minute long video specifically about looking at a cool comic book cover. I write a little text, make a video, share it on social media. So this is I like comics. I like to write about them, talk about them. But what's this on the side over here? What's that guy doing there jumping? Hello everyone. This is VM Campus with another episode of Cool Comic Book Covers. Here we have so Mighty Thor number City one doesn't from exactly apply to the topic of this article. The, uh, but that's also awesome what happens when we've got a, a new series of Thor comics. So this is a really well such. drawn cover now, uh, of the, the new series. Now the main what's really point cool about it is that it's of this my blog here. Fold is to out cover, cover comics. The secondary point is showing an amazing scene yes. um, of adventure. But that's not all because. The yes. Uh, very briefly here and then in more detail later. But a purpose for your blog is to make money via ads. I set that up there. But then specifically here, here's a couple of specifics Google. AdSense and 
Amazon. Amazon affiliates. So Google AdSense. They place ads somewhat randomly. Right now it showed an ad for Solar City. Someone that's reading comics might not really care about solar panels. You never know. But that appeared. Now, if that person comes back later on and reads another article, perhaps the ad has been targeted a little bit better. Because in the beginning, Google doesn't know what kind of ad to show the person yet. But as the person reads this article and another one, and they visit other comic book related websites and they come back to my site, Google will get a little smarter and start to show ads that should relate more to the article that should get people to click them. And the short answer is the reason that there's ads on websites is because when you click on an ad, someone makes money. How much depends on a variety of factors. That ad that's on YouTube that you skip. Some people don't skip it and they click, someone made money. Maybe there's an ad in the middle of that YouTube video that you said, actually I do need to know about that, and you click on it, someone made money. Maybe you have never clicked on an ad, maybe you have an ad blocker installed, maybe you avoid ads like the plague, but a lot of other people do respond to the ads, especially if it's something that they care about, and click, and someone makes money. So we'll, we'll see about this, but you can start to research it and we'll look at it in detail later. Google AdSense is one way that they can place ads on your site and you make money when they click. Affi Amazon Affiliates, you choose the kinds of ads to place. These can be very targeted. I can write an article about a particular comic book and add my Amazon affiliate link. If anyone clicks my Amazon affiliate link and buys that book, I profit a little bit from that. Mm -hmm. If they went off all by themselves and went to Amazon and searched for Thor and bought a book of Thor, I don't get anything. But if they follow my link that I'm mentioning in my article about the Thor comic book and they click and buy, I profit from that. I do have to say, so I've got experience with both of these, I do have to say the Amazon one is the harder one. I've had at least two affiliate accounts shut down by Amazon because it didn't meet their very high standards. Um, whenever you agree to sign up to these things, there's a huge list of things that you agree to. And I thought I was versed in all of these, but I've had two accounts shut down. And obviously, I'm not a spammer. I'm not going to fake this stuff. I'm not going to game the system. I'm going to follow the rules. I want to do it their way because I want to profit from their system. And when, I, when, it shut, when it got shut down, I replied to them and said, can you tell me exactly what, what's wrong? Unfortunately, because they have to deal with so much abuse, they can't quite be as open as they should be. But after speaking to like half a dozen different people at Amazon, some would tell me, well, we cannot tell you exactly uh, how much to write, but you should write content on a regular basis. And I said, all of my submitted links are added on a regular basis. This one right here on, on this site, there hasn't been a new article since February. But on all the other links that I was using, there was something new every week. Okay, so they decided to focus on this one that doesn't have anything new since February. Mm -hmm. Then I said, well, look at all of these other links that I'm showing you and look at all of this content that's, that's uh, updated on a regular basis. And they said, um, whenever you have any kind of website, you have to make sure you're creating content that really is useful to your visitors. What is useful to your visitors? So... I think these two are very valuable, but I've been burned by Amazon twice. I haven't um, had any problem with them very recently, but there's been a couple of times that the site was shut down because, again, so many... These are free to create, therefore a lot of people create them and abuse them. So they have to, unfortunately, be of the mind of guilty until proven innocent. 
And even when you prove yourself innocent, you have to create a brand new account and lose whatever you built before. Yes? Um, I think you lost me a little bit. I, I, at first I thought you meant they simply jerked the ads away from you, but you're talking about they shut down your site. Not my site. They shut down the affiliate account. And so you had an affiliate account on which you were blogging. No, I'm blogging on my site. On your site. And then I have an affiliate account and I create links here that I add to my site. So they just took it off. And they took off my account here so the links no longer work. The links to Amazon no longer work. They're no longer active. Do you have to have a certain amount of people? Just uh, one moment. Let me see if I finished answering that question. Does that answer your question? I believe so. So it, it, sounds, it sounds like you had gone through a fair amount of work to set up something. And yeah. when they shut it down, you felt pretty upset about it. Yeah. All of these articles here on and on other websites that I that I use the links to, all of those links no longer work. So if people click those links, I don't profit from them anymore. They just shut down that affiliate account. It's no longer generating income. If I choose to create another account, I'll get a whole new set of links, but I've got to go back to all the articles that were using the old links and replace the links. And it's happened twice. Uh, in the yeah. Exactly, especially if you do it a lot. Uh, but, that, but this is a substantial amount of money you're talking about. Not yet, because they shut it down so quickly. Uh, no, I meant what, what's at stake. What I mean is, it's not like $25, 50 a month. It's substantial money per month coming in that it makes it just worth the effort. In theory, yes. I personally, uh, it, it wasn't a very, very big amount of money yet because it had been shut down very quickly, but it it could, in theory, as you build more traffic and such, it could be substantial. Okay. Question? Do you have a minimum amount of traffic that you need before these people? No, you. Uh, the traffic can be very low, but it, it's not really about amount of traffic. It's about quality of traffic. If I'm getting a thousand hits to my website, but only seven of them are legitimate hits, well, that thousand doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But if I'm getting twenty. If I'm only getting 20 hits, but 15 of them are actually buying things and clicking, that's much more valuable. So it's more about quality than quantity. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, aren't there other um, affiliate marketing sites that you can use to get links on your uh, blog? Definitely. These are not the only ones. These are the big ones. The, uh, Amazon, of the two, is the one that has the higher bar. I've never had any trouble in the years with Google AdSense. But I've had lots of trouble with Amazon affiliates this year. Uh, but these are not the only ones. Off the top of my head, those are the two big ones. Do you have any others in mind that you might? No, I just um, I thought it was more than a few in the past. Yeah, there's more like the other ones. But because these are the bigger ones that have more of the clout and fame and such, they might be the most valuable. But I'm sure there's other ones. You can also go through the other route of getting uh, getting, um, what do you call it, like sponsor links. You can go directly to a particular, let's say, shoe company and say, hey, we'd like to write articles about your shoe. Can you give us affiliate links? That's a different kind of way there, too, but just different ways for someone to pay you when people click on the ads. Yes? So I have a question for um, Google AdSense versus Amazon affiliates versus actually directly working with a company, like let's say for example I was doing affiliate marketing with GMC, mm -hmm. um, what's the difference generally in, in payout in that? Is it directly with the company that pays a little bit higher than the other two? Or? I have not engaged in very much of the direct promotion so I can't speak too much about that. I've engaged in these two. Amazon had been paying more than Google, although again Amazon had the higher bar. This one could be more valuable than these two, but oftentimes the direct one requires you also kind of a high bar to prove you're going to be valuable to them by having this partnership. So oftentimes in the contract, in, in whatever plan you're developing with them, and your own history, if you can show, I've got, I get regularly a thousand hits a week, uh, and we're growing at 2%. If you can show those companies directly what's in it for them, which is sales of their product, that gives you more clout for you to profit more from being an affiliate. The direct promotion is you form partnerships with companies to promote.
And there's no one-size-fits-all way to do this. These two things can be set up relatively easily, and you get started relatively quickly. This one is the one that is, you're probably working one-on-one -on -one with some marketing department of some company and figuring out, out what the rates are and per click and all of that. But this one, in theory, could be higher because of your value. Now, at the very least, I do have a lot of negativity for Amazon at the moment, and it'll pass. But at the very least, when they did shut down the account, they did give me the money that I had made up to that point. Whereas horror stories that I've heard about YouTube, when you do YouTube advertising, is that they shut down your account and you never see that money. Yeah, they tell you beforehand, now if you're in an agreement, you won't get anything for the whole month if they shut you down even the day before you get paid. Mm -hmm. Again, because of the huge contract that we all agree to but never read. And in there, there are going to be details saying you're not going to click on your own links. You're not going to do this kind of post. You're not going to abuse this. You're not going to do that. And on the one hand, I can understand that because, yes, so many people abuse this. And it's a lot more cost effective for these companies to be guilty until proven innocent. Shoot first, ask questions later. Uh, it's much easier for them to shut things down rather than let these spammers take over their system because there's so many spammers out there. But then us legitimate people that get shut down, it's really annoying. So these are various topics, various examples of websites with blogging. We'll, we'll look at other ones, but the main purpose is creating content to get found for various purposes. Trying to sell jewelry here, trying to sell Mexican food here, trying to sell uh, web services, and just for the fun of writing about comics but then making some money off the ads. So lots of reasons why to engage in blogging. I'm going to take a break in just a moment, but any, any general questions up to this point so far? Yes? Um. How can we find out what people are looking for on search engines that pertain to our website so that we know what to blog about? So say I have a cleaning business, I want to blog about the best uh, eco-friendly products to use for your oven or something. How do I know exactly what people are looking for on Google so I know what to take my topic? Um, we'll talk about that in detail. but. To start off, to think about some points, we have uh, Google Ad AdWords, uh, which is it's their paid system to put ads, but we can use it for free to do keyword research. We have also Bing Web master tools. So Bing is the second biggest search engine, and it has also a keyword research tool. You put in a keyword, let's say I'm a bakery, so I go to Bing or I go to Google and I, and I put into the research tool uh, cookies and it'll give me a list, okay well the cookies has gotten this many number of hits recently and related to cookies is also organic cookies, so that's giving me the idea maybe I should write about organic cookies. Mm -hmm. I can even do a version of this simply from going to the search engine and starting to search. So for example, if I go to Bing or Google, whatever, and I start to type here, um, Comic Con, it's starting to tell me. Here's ideas, Comic Con 2016, Comic Con tickets, con dates, blog, Palm Springs, exclusives. Even this simple way here is giving me ideas of what people are searching for. There are more complex ways that you can do this, but here's one way to give me an idea of perhaps what I can start to write about. So we have, that's the third way here, or uh, search engine direct, which is uh, search keywords directly on the search engine for uh, inspiration. And part of this also, we'll have this activity a little later on, part of what you're going to write also 
is based on what I have earlier up here about the company profile and the marketing strategy. Uh, in the SEO class, we even go as far as to engage in some competitor analysis to figure out what everyone's writing about or competitors and such to figure out what we need to write about to reach an audience. Question? When you just looked at what Comic Con and the search stuff came up, was that ranked? Like, was ranked in order of, like, did Comic Con 2016 get searched the most and then Comic Con tickets and then You know, I'm not exactly sure. That could be because logically this is the closest one here. It's the highest one, which is the one further down here. So I'm not exactly sure, but I feel that that's right, that it is ranked in this way. Yeah. Because Comic Con Palm Springs, I've never heard of that one. But this is the say San Diego dates. Uh, I don't know. It might not quite be in an order, but any of these that are here are valuable because that's what else people are searching for at this point with this keyword. Or I can even do something like uh, how to get Comic Con tickets. As I'm starting to write this, how to get Comic Con badges, how to get badges now, how to get tickets, 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 Comic Con Lego, how to get Comic Con exclusive toys. That's an idea perhaps that I can write a, an article about. It's one of the search terms here. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we will uh, do some more of this. It's 11.05. We'll take a break until 11.15. I'm going to turn the printer back on if you want to print the syllabus. And at